This is Mac OS Ken. The Google Play Store follows Apple's lead. Apple Maps knows where the vaccines are, and Wikipedia wants Apple to kick in on costs. It's Wednesday, the 17th of March, 2021. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Amazon Pharmacy. Your medication made easy. Learn more at Amazon.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Mint Mobile, cutting your wireless bill to as little as 15 bucks a month. Does your wireless carrier make you happy? Mine makes me happy, and mine is Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. By cutting out retail stores, they reduce their cost. Instead of charging you mystery fees to pay for the stores they don't have, their savings become your savings. So yeah, they make me happy because they save me money. A full year of Mint Mobile cost me less than three months with my old carrier. With the same great voice quality, great data speeds, and the coverage I need. There's also an attitude to Mint Mobile, a style that turns me on. Of course, style's nothing without the substance. You want to make sure it works, too. That's why Mint Mobile comes with a seven-day money-back guarantee. Make some calls, surf some sites, go some places. If you're not completely satisfied, return it within seven days for a full refund. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash macOSCan. That's M-I-N-T, mintmobile.com slash macOSCan. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash macOSCan. You pretty much knew this had to happen. CNET ran a piece Tuesday saying that Google is following Apple's lead and lowering the commission it charges most developers selling through the Google Play Store. While the change is similar to Apple's, it sounds like Google's cut might be more generous. According to CNET, Google will only take a 15% commission on sales up to $1 million. The fee will jump to the standard 30% once developers make more than the $1 million in sales for a year, according to the report. Sounds the same as Apple's offer, but it isn't. A piece from Ars Technica ran the math, saying, Apple applies its lower 15% rate to a developer until that developer exceeds $1 million in revenue in a given year, at which point the higher 30% number is applied to all of that developer's earnings. Google still charges 15% on that first million, even if the developer makes 5 million. So in Google's model, a developer who earns $1.2 million on an app pays 15% on 1 million, then 30% on 200,000. In Apple's, a developer making 800,000 forks over 15% on that amount, but if they make $1.2 million, they pay 30% on all $1.2 million, not just 200000 It's tough to know how many developers straddle that million-dollar fence. There's also a bird-in-the-hand thing going on right now. While Apple's lower commission went live at the first of the year, CNET says Google's won't drop until the first of July. Quoted in the CNET piece, Google VP of Product Management Samir Samat said, With this change, 99% of developers globally that sell digital goods and services with Play will see a 50% reduction in fees. I'm no mathematician, but does that indicate that 99% of developers selling in the Google Play Store make less than a million dollars a year? I mean, I knew the split between the sells and the sells nots was big, but... Golly. As for what such large as costs Apple and Google, saying the cost is manageable would be understating it. A piece from CNBC has numbers from the app tracking firm Sensor Tower. 
According to those, Apple and Google are giving up less than 5% of their revenue from apps with the commission changes. We'll let CNBC and Sensor Tower do the math this time. If the 15% fee schedule on revenue up to $1 million had been in place on Google Play in 2020, Google would have missed out on $587 million, or about 5% of Sensor Tower's estimate, of $11.6 billion in Google Pay fees for the year. If Apple's program had been in place for 2020, Sensor Tower estimates that it would have missed out on $595 million, or about 2.7% of its estimated $21.7 billion in App Store fees in 2020. I gotta say, that makes Apple's structure look worse. Actually, I didn't have to say that. And yet I did. Unhappy with the changes, a guy who won't be greatly affected by these changes. Google's shuffling of commissions was likely spurred by Apple's commission switch at the start of the year. That was likely spurred by bad press generated by the Coalition for App Fairness, which was blinked into existence by Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney. Putting it succinctly, CNBC says Epic Games is currently suing Apple and Google, seeking to make changes to their app stores to allow for third-party payment processors as well as other changes. That is like the Reader's Digest version of the Cliff's Notes of what's going on, but it works. Summoned forth from the fort, Sweeney took to Twitter on Tuesday to say why the changes are inadequate in his estimation. Quoting a Sweeney tweet, It's a self-serving gambit. The far majority of developers will get this new 15% rate and thus be less inclined to fight, but the far majority of revenue is in apps with the 30% rate, so Google and Apple can continue to inflate prices and fleece consumers with their app taxes. Yesterday on Mac OS Ken, I said that Apple had seeded fourth betas of iOS 14.5, iPad OS 14.5, TV OS 14.5, Watch OS 7.4, Mac OS Big Sur 11.3, and HomePod 14.5 to developers. I also said you shouldn't be surprised to find public betas available a day or two later. Well, my head hadn't even hit the pillow Monday night, Tuesday morning before Mac Interactive on Twitter let me know that, yeah, that happened. Double-checking, Mac Rumors has updated all of its pieces about the operating systems, saying that the aforementioned betas are now out to Apple's public beta program. If you're not part of that program and want to be, you can find more info at beta.apple.com. Apple has pushed a pretty timely behind-the-scenes update for Apple Maps, Mac Rumors says Apple has updated the app to show nearby COVID-19 vaccine providers across the U.S. According to the report, vaccine location listings include operating hours, address, phone number, and a link to the provider's website, where Apple Maps users can get more information about available vaccines and book an appointment. The piece says you can also ask Apple's virtual assistant starts with an S for vaccine information. Asking rhymes with bleary. Where can I get a COVID vaccination? Should offer pertinent information about nearby locations. More news in a moment. But first a word from Amazon Pharmacy. Your medication made easy. You know what makes sense to me? Not going out when you're sick. Okay, you have to go to the doctor, but if he or she gives you a prescription, do you have to traipse all over town to get it? You do not with Amazon Pharmacy. I'm a Prime member. I get stuff from Amazon. Not everything, but some things. I know they know how to deliver. Literally. And they can do that with your medication, too. Just have your doctor's office send your next prescription straight to Amazon Pharmacy and your meds turn up at your door. It works with most insurance plans nationwide, but Amazon Prime members paying for a prescription without insurance can save with Amazon Pharmacy. 
their pricing is clear and understandable, they're HIPAA compliant, and you can get in touch with a pharmacist 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you're still going to the pharmacy to pick up your meds, have them come to you instead. Amazon Prime members can save on prescription medication when not using insurance and get free two-day delivery. Learn more at Amazon.com slash macOS Ken. That's Amazon.com slash macOS Ken. Amazon.com slash macOS Ken. The source of all knowledge would like a little bit of scratch. Cult of Mac says Wikipedia is asking tech giants like and including Apple to toss in some money to keep the lights on. As a demonstration of Apple's dependence on Wikipedia, says the cult, ask Apple's virtual assistant, what is the Holy Roman Empire? And she'll read an article straight from Wikipedia. A macOS spotlight search for that term pulls up links and articles from the online encyclopedia as well. And the piece says, same goes for Google. Given what they get, it's kind of amazing they haven't been paying already. The piece says Wikipedia provides companies a dump of all articles every two weeks, as well as constant updates of what's changed. But it makes no effort to tailor this data to the needs of the recipients. Maybe for a fee? Cult of Mac highlights a report from Wired outlining Wikimedia Enterprise. The Wikimedia Foundation says Wikimedia Enterprise provides paid developers tools and services that make it easier for companies and organizations to consume and reuse Wikimedia data. Companies that don't want to pay don't have to. They won't be denied access, according to the report. Wikimedia Enterprise is scheduled to launch later this year. Tom Hiddleston's headed back to Apple TV Plus, and you'll get to see him act this time. His first turn on Apple TV Plus was as the narrator for the docuseries Earth at Night in Color. Now, I download blogs as Loki from the MCU and the Night Manager from the Night Manager has signed on for a part in the creepy period drama, The Essex Serpent. If you've forgotten what that one's about, Deadline described it a while ago, saying, The Essex Serpent follows newly widowed Cora, who, having been released from an abusive marriage, relocates from Victorian London to the small village of Old Winter in Essex, intrigued by a local superstition that a mythical creature known as the Essex Serpent has returned to the area. Kira Knightley signed to play Cora originally, though she eventually backed out. Claire Danes of Homeland and My So-Called Life fame will now fill that role. Hiddleston will play Will Ransom, the trusted leader of a small rural community. One assumes that's Old Winter in Essex, but we'll have to wait and see. Still no release date for the series, but the article did have a picture of Hiddleston in costume, apparently on set, so shooting's underway, it seems. And finally today, while it has not been a hit with critics, the Russo Brothers film Cherry seems to have been a hit last weekend for Apple TV+. iMore highlights numbers from the streaming services aggregator Real Good, According to those, the Tom Holland starer was tops in terms of streaming over the weekend. At least it was among the 2 million users that share their streaming habits with the platform. I said that critics haven't been big fans, but general audiences are generally into it. Rotten Tomatoes gives Cherry a score of 37% with critics, while the audience score is a much more respectable 74%. As for the rest of last weekend's fair, counting up from number five, Hulu's Nomadland with Frances McDormand was fifth. Lots of Oscar buzz around that one. Tom and Jerry on HBO Max was fourth. No Oscar buzz there, though would be funny if there were. At number three, it was 1988's Coming to America on Amazon Prime. That was beaten out by this year's sequel, Coming 
2 America, also on Amazon Streamer. And as was already mentioned, Cherry from Apple TV Plus took the top spot. Look for all of them to shift down at least one notch this weekend when people, at the very least, start the four-hour Zack Snyder cut of Justice League coming to HBO Max. Coming up in a few minutes, NFT. Not since Bitcoin has a tech phrase fired imaginations and pried open purses the way NFT does today. While the world is beset by NFT madness, there is merit to the technology. Jeff Gamut explains his NFT awakening in a few minutes. Find it and follow it wherever you find and follow podcasts. Mac OS Ken Live goes live again today, 3.30 Pacific, 6.30 Eastern, on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ken Ray. Catch it live or on replay there. You can also grab the audio podcast, Mac OS Ken Live, wherever you get podcasts. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Mint Mobile. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Amazon Pharmacy, your medication made easy. Learn more at amazon.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.